So hey guys, what's up? This is Ezekiel, and welcome back to the next episode of the Battle Cats Evolution Series. Yeah, so in the last episode, we talked about the Mr. Ninja Cat, not the Ninja Cat actually. Some people got confused that um, it was the Ninja Cat, even though um, both the Mr. Ninja Cat and the Ninja Cat have really similar names, so sorry for the confusion there. But for today, I'm going to be showing you guys a cat that is particularly great against floating enemies, and that might friends is not the Sanzo cat because we already showed that video previously but better it's the fortune teller cat right so I feel like this cat's kind of underappreciated and also not really used too too much but it's actually pretty freaking powerful if you use it in uh, really you know correct scenarios let's say with the right combinations of cat of course but obviously we'll get into all of that stuff later in the video also just wanted to specify sorry for the raised voice right here <laughs> a little bit excited but um I meant to do the Pogo Stick Cat video for this video, but I changed it up to the Fortune Teller Cat instead, so I'm going to be doing the Pogo Stick Cat video um, later after this one, but uh, I'm going to tell you guys the reason for that as well later on, because I feel like it's meaningful or it's, you know, has some relevance to me anyways, but anyways, let's just get into the cat description right here. So, the Fortune Teller Cat, a cat that loves the idea of fortune telling, has read one too many astrology books, <laughs> might knock back floating enemies so obviously you know I myself don't really read astrology that much but I did hear that it's uh, pretty interesting if you're you know into the stars and all that uh, fun stuff but yeah this cat specializes in knocking back um, floating enemies and while it might not seem like the greatest thing for you know a lot of you guys because you know there's other effects like the slow effect or the freeze effect stuff like that that actually seems a little bit more relevant in a lot you know in most cases but um, the knockback effect isn't actually too bad um, because if you pair it with set abilities, then it can actually make, like, a pretty, um, deadly combo for stopping enemies from actually advancing to your, um, your cat base, but anyways, this one focuses on floating enemies. The only thing, though, is that it can only attack single units, which might seem like a bit of, uh, you know, uh, a deal breaker for most people, because, like, obviously, air attack damage is usually better than single, um, attacking units, but, uh, you know, we'll just have to see when we actually use this cat, so just keep that in mind that uh, these are the abilities, right? So, the next cat in the evolution chain right here is the Fisherman Cat, which is actually probably one of the cooler evolutions of the chain right here. Like, the true form also looks pretty cool, but I, I sort of like the Fisherman Cat just because it reminds me a lot of, uh, you know, fishing, uh, Jimmy no Ipo, um, if you've heard of that, like, boxing anime with, like, the Ipo dude and then, like, a bunch of the other dudes, like, Takamura and stuff like that, but anyways, eldest son of a prominent Tuna Fisherman gets seasick. Might knock back floating enemies, which is pretty good. Like, you know, as long as he can knock back the enemies, like, it's fine if he gets seasick because he's still doing the job that he's uh, meant to do, which is not fishing, it's fighting enemies, of course. So, um, abilities remain the same. The only difference is that, obviously, aesthetically, you go from a fortune teller to a fisherman. So, it's a good, uh, you know, employment switch. I actually don't know which uh, job technically makes more. You know, if you want to get, like, uh, super um, technical right here. But, uh, you know, either way, like, both jobs are still quite fascinating in, it, in and of itself. But um, the final form right here for the fortune teller cat is the doctor cat. Oh, baby, this is, like, this dude right here is just pretty freaking, like, you know, he's not, like, crazy, um more powerful in terms of like the previous two evolutions, but he's still uh, pretty cool. His medical philosophy is hair of the dog. If it doesn't kill ya, it must be working, right? Might knock back floating enemies. Like, I feel like that description right there, um, I might be overthinking things right here, but it, it's probably like, I don't know. I take it like it's dissing doctors of today's society where a lot of them are just like, oh, this guy's sick. Well, I'm going to make him spend a lot of money on maybe, you know, 30 or three different medicines that he doesn't really need, but uh, it could probably help him. So we're going to make him spend all that money. Like, I understand that, you know, most doctors today don't actually do that. Like, it's probably, it was probably more relevant in the past, but things have gone a lot better since then. But still, I feel like there are still some doctors out there that are, Kind of sketchy when it comes to, uh, you know, giving you what you actually need versus what you, you know, you don't really need. But anyways, abilities stay the same. The only difference is that, um, well, you guys can probably see the differences in the stat tables yourself, so don't actually have to specify that. But, um, 
Yeah, so early in the video, I mentioned that um, I was going to do the Poker Stick Cat, but instead I chose to do the Fortune Teller Cat. Well, the reason I chose to do this cat instead is because she's been sick recently, and so I've been trying to take care of her for the past few days, and I actually went back to my place today because um, she was feeling a little bit better, but... Um, you know, I'm making this video just as, a, almost as, like, a way to sort of, I'm not sure, maybe to make her feel better, so, you know, hopefully, Lux, if you're watching this video, which I highly doubt it, but if you are, then uh, I really hope that you get better, because, you know, really love you and stuff. But anyways, anyways, aside from that, you know, the reason why I chose this cat, let's actually get back onto the video right here. So, for this team composition right here, we're gonna be going for a very knockback oriented team so obviously the first slot is all about the knockback combos we actually have three this time which is a little bit surprising because you don't typically see or it's really difficult to make combos that have three of what you want so they're all knockback and then we're gonna just have a bunch of spam cats with the doctor cat as our main uh fighting um our main fighting cat, along with the U run run cat, because she's actually, like, you know, if it's just the doctor cat, then nothing's really going to happen. But before we do that, we're actually going to be focusing on the aesthetical looks of all the evolutionary forms, just before we get to the actual fight right here. And also, forgot to mention this, meant to say this uh, early in the start of the video, but um, wanted to give a quick shout out to ConTechNick99 and Ozzy Kitty. So, um, their channel links will be in the description below, so feel free to check them out uh, when you uh, decide to do so. Um, anyways, let's just uh, get right on to the dojo trial right here, starting with the Fortune Teller Cat. So, um, if you look at the Fortune Teller Cat, it's like nothing too crazy. It actually moves a, you know, I don't know. At a fairly fast rate, which is like kind of funny because, like, you know, imagine if you're trying to balance yourself on a on a freaking crystal ball. Like, you you know how hard that is, right? This guy does it like super easily with like no little trouble. And the fact that he can jump on it and it somehow protrudes a lot of spikes, which is strange because I don't really know much crystal balls in real life that I can actually do that. But the fact that he can jump on this thing and still maintain balance is like really really impressive. So you got to give props to the Fortune Tail Cat for having this sort of uh, interesting ability the end of itself but regardless of that it's uh, pretty much I don't know as you'd expect it to be sort of has that stereotypical fortune teller like look to it so you know it's a uh, it's a cool cat really to look at with that uh, some insane uh, balancing skills on the fortune teller ball or crystal ball or whatever the heck it is because it's still protruding spikes which is a little bit concerning but um hey as long as it's not hurting him then that's totally fine but the next evolutionary form that we have here is the Fisherman Cat. Now, this one's a little bit, uh, I wouldn't say sketchy or anything like that, but it seems a little bit more concerning versus the first one, because you know how you're balancing on the Fortune Teller Crystal Ball? Well, this guy is literally balancing on a freaking sea urchin. Like, that must be hurting him. Like, he, he's probably wearing, like, some, you know, sort of special sandals or something to prevent his feet from getting, like, you know, poked continuously every single time. But, like, man, that, like, I don't know, it feels like... It would just feel super uncomfortable if you're <laughs> standing on a sea urchin, uh, let alone it moving on land. Like, hmm. I know it looks like it's rolling, but I'm pretty sure, based on all the documentaries that I've seen, sea urchins aren't necessarily meant to, you know, roam across uh, dry landscapes. They, it's more, it's, it makes more sense for it to be in the ocean, but uh, then again, there's a lot of cats that uh, don't necessarily logically make sense, and yet they still do what they do, which is pretty cool. Um, but aside from that, he has the, like, the little fishing stick, or the fishing pole, fishing stick pole, fishing pole stick, not too sure. Has that fishing gear on him, which makes him look a lot cooler. And I don't know, it'd be nice if, uh, <laughs> I don't know, he, like, he's using the urchin as like his main way of attacking form. But uh, it'd be cool if he used his fishing pole to like, you know, do some damage or something cool like that. Maybe he can fish the enemies, maybe he can turn them into like dinner or something if he's fighting, let's say, the angelic angel. Uh, the angelic angel fish sort of boss, like, I bet this guy could like one-shot him if um, he uses fishing skills but anyways that's uh pretty much that for the fishing cat and finally we're gonna move on to the doctor cat so you know aside from the, the, the past two forms the doctor cat i feel is a little bit more dark in a more cynical sort of way so dark as in hmm, logically not so much like 
because if you see this guy attacking at, at first head, like, you don't really see it right away. But anyways, what he's riding it seems to be some sort of, like, a bacteria sort of thing. But uh, if you take a closer look, every single time the Dr. Cat steps on him or jumps on him, uh, the bacteria on the bottom is just like, ah! He has, like, the X eyes on him, and then he, like, explodes out. So I feel like, in a way, he, like, he's kind of abused. Like, I know it's, you know, bacteria and all, and that's never a good thing, unless you're talking about the good bacteria, which, uh... You know, I kind of forget the whole logistics and stuff, but there are good bacteria that do help you in many ways that you wouldn't expect. But um, the fact that this guy's actually hurting the dude under him, it kind of makes it—it kind of makes it feel for the bacteria. You're just like, wow, does that suck? It's like, it's like you're, there's another thing forcing you to do something else that you don't really want to do, but you kind of can't help it because you know you're on the bottom and the cat's on top. But um, you know, oh well, I guess that's sort of the life that you have to face if you're gonna be the. Uh, unfortunate bacteria that has to work alongside the Dr. Cat in order to fight off the enemies, but um, you have the little other two orbs that are floating uh, right beside, so at least they're not taking too much damage, but you know, they're kind of just watching for her, they're just like, ah, no, the main dude's getting hurt. But um, yeah, it's uh, pretty cool, you have the Dr. Cat, it really looks like Dr. Mary, I didn't even mention that at first, did I? No. He does remind me of Dr. Mario in a lot of ways, just because, you know, Dr. Cat and Dr. Mario, I don't know, I played a lot of Nintendo games back as a kid, but um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Oh, one last thing, actually. I really like the bow tie that this guy's wearing. Like, it just looks looks pretty good. like how it kind of stays in place no matter how many times he is able to smack the enemies and take a bit of damage and stuff like that. But um, anyways, that's pretty much it for um, in terms of aesthetical looks. And now we can actually use the legit team in a, in a battle scenario. So that's the, the real thing that a lot of people want to see, right? Right. So... We are going to be going to the weak and mildly acidic stage. Just the first stir, just because I don't have the two stirs or the three stirs yet, so obviously that might, uh, you know, change up the end results just a little bit, but just to give you guys a reference point of what uh, this cat could potentially do, we're going to be doing this in the one star, no more bad dreams stage, because this one in particular has uh, a certain type of enemy that will, you know, it's basically the one that's going to be um, the most useful in terms of showing off this guy's ability, so... Here we go, I'm gonna be going for the speed boost, um, what's it called, the speed boost power up, just because, like, there's not a whole lot to do, like, really, before, like, the crazy battle starts going, they're just gonna send a lot of weak units, so I figure instead of, like, you know, making you guys wait through the entire process of, like, just waiting for the, our worker cat thing to max out, I may as well kind of speed, speed it up a little bit so that we can get to the battle a little bit quicker, but, um, yeah, as we're doing this, um, other things I can talk about at the same time, because, you know, um, I know I talk about the girlfriend and stuff, like Lux and whatnot in previous videos, but, uh, I like talk- I like telling you guys what's going on in my life, because I feel like that's how you sort of, like, you know, to like a YouTuber, it's like you gotta know them in a more personal level, other than just seeing or hearing what they say in a particular game like this, so... You know, I'm not just some dude that's like sitting here playing battle cats and being cool and all. Like, I actually have uh, cool things to talk about and stuff. So, um, some cool things to talk about. Hmm. I had a few tests last week, which I was able to study for, which was you know pretty so it's pretty simple. Just a, a philosophy test and an Italian test. The Italian test I wasn't really ready for, but I still got uh, about an A A minus C sort of mark, so that's pretty good. And then for the philosophy test, I didn't really study for that too too much. Um, I only studied a lot for like the night before which um i think for like uh, life advice you probably shouldn't do they should probably study like uh, in advance so that you get a really good mark but i was pretty confident in my answers so you know pretty uh pretty good stuff like i use sort of like a picture uh what's the word uh a pictory sort of style so instead of writing like just paragraphs of words which is really difficult to remember um i'll draw pictures instead so that'll help me remember the terms a lot better so just a quick tip in case you uh, need to memorize something really really quickly but um aside from that uh you know Everything else is pretty much uh, simple and as can be, other than the whole girlfriend getting sick incident, like that's a little bit, uh, you know, hindering and worrisome, like, I don't know, I can't, I can't really stop thinking about it, TBH, and I apologize for that, because, you know, this Battlecats video shouldn't be uh, thinking too, too hard on that, but still, I don't know, I, d I just can't help but, uh, just can't help but think about her, so, again, if you're watching this, then, uh, Lux, then, uh, you know, please feel better. <laughs> but anyways, the battle actually starts right now, so they're gonna send out the first regular Bun Bun, and, um, depending on our luck right here, because it can vary once they send out all of the Bun Bun variants, um, this is either gonna go very, very well, or it's not gonna go very, very well, um, at all. So, the whole idea here is that, uh, 
with all the knockback combos, we're trying to showcase the fact that, like, uh, like this is what the Fisherman Cat specialized in. He's able to knock back foes and push them all the way back to their enemy base. So I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to do, able to do this one because I, I tested the, I tested this before just to actually make sure to see if the Doctor Cat was capable of uh, you know doing this right here. But it looks like not. It's not gonna be the case in this particular one, which is a bit unfortunate. Unless we're lucky, like you never know. Like you know. Things can happen, so what I think I'll do, just to make this a little bit easier, because it looks like they are struggling just a little bit, I'm going to start sending out a couple other cats to, you know, support these guys, and maybe if we can build up a little bit of a, a Dr. Cat army, then it should be a bit easier. Okay, so, actually, I didn't, I don't, I don't even think I needed to send out all these cats right here, because it looks like these dudes are starting to um, hold their own right here. Well, that could vary now, because they send out this dude, and this dude's kind of annoying, because he can sometimes send out the wave attack, um, just at random times like that, so that's going to basically kill the entire... A wall of whatever cats I actually have on the field, so it could make things a little bit more difficult, but still. Um, the fact that I'm just using mostly knockback cats, so, you know, really the Doctor Cat and all these other cats that also can do knockback damage, but the fact that I'm really just using the Doctor Cat and we're able to hold off this line relatively well with not too much concern or, you know, worry that they're gonna break through, it's, uh, it's kind of surprising, isn't it? Like, really, I don't know, because <laughs> like a lot of people say that, oh, the Doctor Cat's not that great. You should, you should, you should just use the Sense Cat instead because the Sense Cat's more reliable, has a little bit more range, you do the slow effect, which is a little bit more helpful and occurs more often and lasts longer than just a simple knockback. But still, like, you know. Knockback isn't to be messed with, like, it could still be very viable in, like, a lot of cases just like this one right here. And in most, and in some cases, you can even use the Doctor Cat and the Sans Cat together, so that's like, you know, you have the slow effect and then the knockback so that when they're knocked back, they're still just standing there, allowing your cat army to advance further and, you know, continue to push, so, um, you know, so the whole point is that the Doctor Cat is... Don't mess with the Doctor Cat, it's like, it's pretty strong, it's pretty, it can be pretty good if you, you know, you're lucky, and, uh, you have the right cats, uh, working together with it right here, so, I guess just for the fun of it, let's just see if we're able to push these guys all the way back to their enemy base, if we can, then, I guess that's gonna be a mission accomplished right there, but if not, then, uh, well, I guess we can just, uh, we can safely conclude that the Doctor Cat is a good support cat, but probably isn't like necessarily the best like attacking cat. And as I say this, <laughs> one of the Bun Buns is able to destroy all of them in a very simple swoop. So I think you guys pretty much get the idea. Like this cat, you know, it's very good against um, you know floating enemies. Can do the knockback effect, which is very useful still. I'd argue, as I just did. So. Yeah, I don't think I have to go much further into that stuff right there. So, uh, the final conclusion for this cat, is the Dr. Cat good and worth getting? Um, I'm gonna say yes, actually. I'm gonna say yes, it is worth getting. Um, you can't necessarily use it in a lot of scenarios because there are a lot of floating enemies out there that have a higher range than the Bun Buns do. So, obviously the Dr. Cat might struggle when it comes to getting really close because even though it does have the increased defensive powers from its two previous forms, it's not really enough to make it like super tanky to a point where it can sort of like take all these hits like a champ so just keep that in mind what I would recommend though is that if you are planning to get, to get the doctor cat or you do have him and you're wondering if you should get the Tribulation for him, then uh, I will say get him, but uh, prioritize other cats like, let's say, the Cat Tour or the Sansa Cat, because those cats, I feel, just, uh, like, the Cat Tour does more damage, and the Sansa Cat has that, like, slow effect, but still, like, just, you know, if you have the cat, then, you know, just, just upgrade him, and he'll do you wonders when it comes to fighting Bun Buns and other floating enemies with a very short range. That's, uh... Pretty much gonna be it, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Woo!